environmental issues have several dimensions the important thing is that the industry wants skills mm. and the competencies that is uh, how can we build ethical moral citizens multidisciplinary knowledge required in solving complex problems today we have the honor to have co the conversation with dr k kasturi rangan dr k kasturi rangan chairman committee to draft the national education policy formerly chairman of indian space research organization it is a pleasure to have a conversation with you sir happy to see you chairman yes, so we are very keen to understand the rationale and the reason behind having multidisciplinarity as part of the national education policy 2020 could you please share us your insights with regard to multidisciplinarity about this uh, question of interdisciplinarity or holistic nature of knowledge mm -hmm. this is something which we wanted to introduce into the new age curriculum educational policy primarily because of the fact that as you know currently the knowledge is a very dynamic mm -hmm. system the knowledge spectrum and if you look at the way in which uh, one has to update oneself to be relevant in a society one has to make sure that you are able to catch up with the progress of the knowledge and that is where we thought it's absolutely essential that a lifelong learning is a must for the people to be relevant at any point in their life professional life in the society and secondly that they should be able to pick up the new knowledge with the necessary preparations that they will get through the educational system in doing this what we did was that uh, we will we address the question in the later portion of the school education mm -hmm. a little bit of holisticity in mm -hmm. the knowledge of the youngster when he picks up from different areas mm -hmm. the knowledge elements mm -hmm. and then more importantly in the undergraduate portion mm -hmm. of the education the undergraduate system we wanted to make sure the there is a fairly comprehensive understanding of the multiple elements of a knowledge spectrum at the level so that when you try to take up a particular subject and try to go into the details of that you can see it in a broader perspective of the total knowledge mm. that you have in the available to you so the more you are able to accumulate this kind of a spectral mm. capability of the knowledge the better will be your specialized subject which you yes. want to pursue yes. so that's why even though we may have the the have what you may call as the if the 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 now the subjects which are related to major, major and minor major, yes. and things like that we want to make sure that these major and minor subjects have a foundational knowledge mm. which comes out of learning for example there is no reason why we not look at physics with philosophy mm, mm, mm. medicine with mathematics yes. and things of that kind yes. so this will enable and currently as you know these are all picked up in silos yes and when you try to do it in silos then you always have a limitation with respect to how much you are able to uh, uh, apply the yes. knowledge that you have learned in the undergraduate thing with respect to what the broader requirements uh, of a society uh, is uh. in fact i could say this uh, in the context of a very interesting episode uh. when steve jobs was asked uh, how is uh. it that he would make yes. friendly systems like yes. macintosh yes he said the macintosh we made not only because we had the best computer scientists in the world but these computer scientists were also mm. some of them were musicians mm. some of them are architects uh, some of them are environmentalists and that kind of a thing so obviously their interest spanned mm. much more than the specialization yes. that they would that brought in a level of innovation mm. to the macintosh mm. that it became one of the world famous a contribution yes. in the area of computers yes. so this is the kind of a thing that we are expecting we think it's extremely important for the 21st century preparation to have a broad understanding of several subjects and their relationships and the ability to apply this mm. to a particular problem at hand it means we dominated by one subject okay. like physics or chemistry yes. or engineering mechanics but the induction of knowledge of many other areas will add strength and innovation to that central theme yes. that you want to pursue that's the reason why we want to make sure 
that this multidisciplinarity as well as the holisticity of knowledge together we call this as a liberal education mm, mm, mm. the liberal education becomes That's an important good. component yes. and we want to start, start it as early as possible but at a time when you are able to pick up this kind of significance of this that's why immediately pass the school education mm -hmm. and before you complete the four year education in the undergraduate level yes. you have this preparation which will enable you to be ready mm -hmm. to pick up the dynamic changes that the knowledge spectrum will demand mm -hmm. and for which you should be a successful professional mm -hmm. or any type of service that you want to do to society. We would uh, like to know from you uh, in the rough national education policy uh, there has been reference to multidisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity and also cross disciplinary how do we see the difference between these three and how would it have impact on our higher education okay. system? This is a very important issue because yes. there is a tendency, at least in my interaction in the recent times hmm. with the educationists and academicians, that uh, the multidisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity, which you call as a cross-disciplinarity, yes. yes. uh, they are uh, similar. Hmm. 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 On one side, I may say it may be similar, but if you really look at the details of how do you characterize them, how do you see the distinction between the three, you know, one of the thing, fundamental things which we should recognize is our mind has got enormous ability to look at things much beyond what we normally employ it for. Uh, uh. How do you employ it to its full capability uh. or at least to its substantial capability? Yes. It is by making sure that you have enough of an uh, ecosystem mm -hmm. which you can brought to bear in thinking in a diverse mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So the diversity of thinking is an ability that you need to develop. Mm -hmm. You want to make use of the mind. Mm -hmm. And when you make use of the mind through the diversity of thinking, it's a joy, mm -hmm. really. On the other hand, the diversity of thinking mm -hmm. and which you, where you bring in the mind to its higher levels of Absolutely. ability. Yes certainly has an advantage mm -hmm. with uh, respect to the way you want to look at a particular mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. So this is where I want to now distinguish a problem uh, with respect to, you know, what you, what you are trying to do mm -hmm. is in a diversity of thinking and the way you try to look at this kind of a thing, you try to actually appeal to two sides of the brain, mm -hmm. the analytical side That's of the brain actually the creativity mm. of the brain. These are two different elements mm. in the brain, mm. but you bring both of them and strengthen both of them. So you are not working with one section of the brain's capability, but you are trying to invoke mm. both the sides of the brain's capability. Now, what happens in the real situation? I want to quote a very well-known educationist in this mm. connection. You know, the, if you look at the new problems, the new challenges in the areas of various areas of knowledge, you find that most of them fall between the interfaces mm -hmm. between two disciplines. And in fact, much of the new ideas have come okay. because you are able to see the interfaces a little more clearly mm -hmm. and you are able to make a sense of how these interfaces are defined by the knowledge coming mm -hmm. from one side as well as yes. from the other yes. side. Yes. And these may be two different disciplines. So now the ability is how do you make sure that this currently this kind of a knowledge if you do you treat them as independently they fall within a chasm mm. there are striations of knowledge True. and you need to expl explore the chasm mm. and the striations mm. and the mm. knowledge to see what kind of relation we can bring in between one side and the other side Absolutely. which is the two disciplines for example and that is precisely what an interdisciplinary subject. Mm, mm. You are not going to be with one subject, one, a discipline, yes. or another discipline. You are trying to see the striations mm. in the knowledge sure. which need to be tied up. Tied up yes. So that is where the interdisciplinary subject sure. comes into thing. The problem is not amenable to only define in terms of interface. Yes. It needs a much more broader examination of the relationship between the multiple disciplines. Mm, mm. And this may not be amenable purely in terms of defining one interface. Mm. You need a much more uh, elaborate mm. understanding of the problem mm. and its definition and the way the multiple elements of that particular problem are connected. Now, there can be problems in which this could be even more. Yes. When I talk of even more complex systems, this would mean 
it you need to bring in new models mm. new ideas new way of doing things now when you want to do this kind of a thing neither the interdisciplinary nor the uh, multidisciplinary serves yes. only inadequately mm, mm, the purpose mm. that you want of integrating yes. and if you don't do that then you don't create new knowledge and new directions mm. and new subjects yes. even new subjects that is where the transdisciplinary approaches come comes into picture the transdisciplinary subjects really provide you with an opportunity to look at a subject in its totality mm. but with the appropriate understanding of the individual mm. areas mm. and then trying to make an integrative mm. approach mm. which is much more involved mm. okay. than either a multidisciplinary or mm. a interdisciplinary approaches sure. this will be particularly if you want to know this if for what when you want to have a problem mm. where you got humanities and arts on yes. one side yes. and science and technology on one sure. other side and you want to integrate okay. these areas it is here that you need transdisciplinary okay. because you interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary won't suffice mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. principle that we are talking of yes. so this is why the three you know, they are in terms of hierarchy mm. they are increasing complexity the mechanics of integrating the knowledge becomes much more mm. involved